In this video, I'm going to show you an easy trick to hide route paths behind buildings using After Effects. Starting at Google Earth Studio, we're going to create a new project and we'll set the uh, duration and then we'll click on the start button. Using the uh, search bar, we're going to search for New York City or NYC and we'll zoom in. So for this animation, we're going to uh, create a uh, route path from Battery Park to the uh, World Trade Center uh, through the canyons of uh, Manhattan. First thing we'll do is get uh, some reference frames. So we're going to do a complete overhead of uh, the area that we'll be uh, creating the path. We'll set our pan to zero and our tilt to zero. This, uh, in essence, creates a map that is facing north at the top. Uh, we'll create an adjustment and start adding a few track points. We'll lock in our first frame at this uh, view and then we'll just uh, zoom in to add our track points. First one will be our start for the path. Then we're going to create one sort of around the center of our path. This will help for a little bit of an alignment later. So we'll just call this one center. And then we'll move over to our endpoint and create a uh, track point here called end. Back to our initial view. We'll move ahead a second and create another version of that so that we can have some stability for a second. Then let's uh, start building the animation. So we'll start uh, at our start point and we'll create a uh, keyframe. We're going to move ahead a little bit, sort of we have to visualize following the path. Uh, and we're going to enter Broadway here. Then we'll move up a bit and we will uh, put a uh, keyframe here at uh, the Trinity Church. So we'll then rotate a little bit and look down at the uh, back street where we'll be having the path going up. We'll put a keyframe there, we'll rotate again, and now look up that street a little bit, and we'll put a keyframe right there. And we'll rotate around this intersection here where the 9-11 uh, Memorial is, and we'll put a keyframe there. We'll slide down a little bit, adjust our angle, and we'll put a keyframe there. We'll then zoom back to show a little bit of the city. And then back to a full Manhattan shot. So once we got our basic keyframes in there, we're going to adjust it to uh, smooth out the animation. We'll set our tilt here down to approximately zero so that we can look straight down at the street level as the path will come through there. We'll make some slight adjustments to the uh, panning. And then the tilt here again. And some final tweaks to make everything smooth. And we'll set this to render now. We'll select a uh, folder on our computer. And we're going to double the resolution to 4K. This technique requires two slightly different renders. This is the first of the two renders. Okay, so now that uh, render is done, we're gonna go to add attributes and then scroll down to 3D buildings. We'll select that and click Done. Uh, we're going to be turning off the 3D for this next render. So this is what the 3D buildings does, is it hides and uh, shows the 3D buildings. So we'll have it turned off. Then we'll click on the Render button. Give this a different file name uh, for the folders. And then we'll render this one again also in 4K. 
Okay, so when that render is done, we're going to open up Adobe After Effects. And we're going to use the uh, script file to import the uh, first set of uh, images. So we'll use the uh, base one here, the uh, NYC path. And this will import the uh, camera and uh, track points that we have as well. So we're just going to delete our text layers. Then we're going to switch over to the project tab, right mouse click and select import file. Then navigate to uh, where our no buildings path is and in the footage. Select the first file, import the JPEG sequence and click import. We'll then drag our render without the buildings down over top of our first render there. We're then gonna create a new layer, a shape layer. Uh, we'll set our fill on the default uh, rectangle to blue and we will drag to cover the entire screen. Then gonna switch it into a 3D mode and select the center as our parent object. We'll then set the position to zero comma zero comma zero and also set our orientation to zero comma zero comma zero. And so now we have a 3D layer that is associated to the center track point. Then hide the uh, rectangle and we're going to draw our path on this same layer. So we've got to make sure that contents is selected. Then we're going to set our fill to uh, transparent and using the pen tool, we will draw a path from uh, the Battery Park area up Broadway and to the World Trade Center area. So we're just gonna follow the road here and we can make adjustments uh, as we go. So just getting it relatively close is important, but uh, it doesn't have to be exact. We'll then open up the properties for shape one, which is our path. We'll set the uh, stroke width to four then we'll set the line cap to round cap and the line joint to a bevel joint. Uh, you can use a round joint there as well. With the uh, first stroke selected, we're then going to use the add option and add another stroke. We'll uh, move it underneath. So we'll change the first stroke color to green. And we'll adjust the settings for the uh, second stroke here. So we'll keep it at white. We'll change the stroke width to six. We'll set the line cap to round cap and the joint to a bevel join. So we'll just scrub through now just to see the path. I'll fit that to screen there. And you can see that it's a following path, but it's on the flat layer or the non 3D layer. So let's uh, add now the 3D component. We're going to uh, take our original 3D uh, images. We're going to duplicate it, control D, and then slide it to the top. It now is over top of our actual path. So we'll go to the effects and presets. We'll type in diff to uh, display the difference map. We'll drag that over to our 3D layer at the top. We'll then select our difference layer source as the no buildings path. And this will combine the two images and look for any differences between the two. We can then hide our no buildings uh, layer, uh, make adjustments to our tolerance to zero. And you can see now that the path is concealed by buildings that are in front of it. We can make adjustments to the path as well um, while it's in this view. Uh, and I can see there that we want to make a bit of an adjustment to the uh, bevel there on the corner. So we'll switch that from a bevel join to a round join. And we'll select that point and move it in a little bit to the uh, road surface so that it uh, looks a little bit better going behind the building. Make a slight tweak to the tolerance and the blur so that uh, we get a cleaner cut around the buildings. Now, some of the 3D objects that it will interact with also are vehicles on the road. So you will see in some portions where 
the vehicles uh, appear on top of the path, uh, you can make adjustments to the path itself to avoid that, or you can include it. You may notice issues with elevation increases and decreases. Uh, this particular technique works well on flat surfaces. Um, as After Effects is not a 3D program, it uses a simulated 3D plane along with the camera to display various 3D-like effects. However, each point uh, is on the same plane, so it does require a flat surface. Uh, you may notice in this particular example, uh, the elevation is about 20 feet difference from start to finish. But you can usually make some adjustments to the points to conceal that difference. We're now going to add the uh, trim paths. So we'll make sure that the shape layer is selected, select add and then trim paths. This will allow us to reveal the path as the animation progresses. So we'll go to our uh, starting frame and open up the trim path options. We'll click on the stopwatch at the end and set that to zero as our starting point. We'll then advance about a second and adjust the end value so that we can see the path within the frame and that will set a keyframe automatically then advance a little bit further, and we'll do this through the animation. By advancing a few seconds at a time and making adjustments to the end value, gives us a little bit of control over what is in the frame and what we want to display. You may find some areas require some manual masking. However, generally speaking, this technique is fairly effective. And so we finished the adjustments and we are ready to render. In some cases, the Hide 3D Building feature may display a slightly different satellite image. In these cases, this technique may be ineffective. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.